This morning, I would like to take as my text uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I'm going to be focusing on, on verse 7, but I just want to read the, the, the whole, that little section, verses 6 and 7, for it's a familiar passage to many of us. Paul is writing to Timothy. Um, Timothy was, was um, apprenticed to Paul, is the best way to put it. And, and Paul was writing to him to encourage him in his ministry and his service. And he, he writes to Timothy and says, uh, Therefore I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and sound judgment or a sound mind. We're continuing to look at a bold faith. And... Um, just, just to give you a little recap of where we've been. We, have, we started by looking about how f- to, to have bold faith, we need to stand in our calling. We need to stand on God's word. We need to stand on God's promises. And we need to stand on God's victory. We've then been looking at how to, st- how to stand in faith and how to stand in prayer. And now we're, this morning we're going to look at how to stand in God's spirit. I think it's a very apt verse for the moment, really. Um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound judgment. I don't know about you, but um, I, I try to make a habit of watching the news. Does anybody else like to watch the news? <laughs> no, no. Some people do. Um, I, I just like to know what's going on most of the time. I must admit, the last few days has been quite hard work with the news. Because it's all been about how the planet is falling apart. And how it's all going to end in disaster. And you've got national leaders standing up and saying, if you don't do something about climate change, our country is going to disappear off the planet. And it's like, oh. This is all very heavy and can engender fear. When we think about, you know, wars to end all wars, well, that just has not happened. There's just more and more and more conflict. What is happening now in the world? Where are the flashpoints in the world? Who is going to have the next fight with who? And is it going to involve us? All these questions can lead to fear. Timothy was in a difficult situation. He was trying to uh, lead, a, lead the church, if you like, to, to be a minister of the gospel. He was trying to tell people about Jesus in a climate that was actively hostile to faith. Paul was writing to him possibly near the end of his life. It's possible this was the last piece of the New Testament to be written by Paul. And he was writing to Timothy almost at the last, knowing he was going to die, knowing he was going to be executed for his faith. We've not been given a spirit of fear. It's too easy to fear in this world. Um, I don't know about you, but if, if, I, if I think about things too long, I start to get nervous about what's going to happen next. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what's coming. I don't know about you. Um, you never know what's around the corner. All we can do is try not to fear. Trust in God. That's my next point. You've got there before me. Trust in God. You see, faith, has to speak to fear. And I I do honestly believe that faith is the antidote to fear. And we've been talking about bold faith, a confident faith, and I'd like to share with you a little phrase which I heard over the last couple of weeks. I think I probably have heard it before, but it really seemed apt for for this particular uh, week uh, as we think about 
this particular verse. And, and it's, this, this is the phrase. Bold faith stands on the shoulders of quiet trust. It's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Um, it, was, it was said by Bill Johnson. Put the credit in. Get it out there so everyone knows. Bold faith stands on the shoulders of quiet trust. And I was thinking about that. To have a bold faith, a strong faith, a confident faith, is only possible if I trust in the one in whom I am believing. And this verse speaks to me about that trust. And I'd like to look, uh, as I said, at one, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound judgment, or sound mind. We have to recognise that the spirit that's being talked about here, I, I would confidently want to suggest to you, is the Holy Spirit. That God himself comes to live in us and with us each and every day. And it is this person who is described as having power, love and sound judgment. And God the Holy Spirit in us helps us with these things. I don't know about you, but I often do not feel that I have the power or the ability to just deal with everything that's happening in life around me. But I know that God with me does have the power and the ability. I may not always feel particularly able to love all the people that God puts in my life. Even the ones I think I love sometimes stress me out. But God with me is the God of love who can help us love. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I wonder... How do I make decisions? How do I go about making choices in this world? But the God who is with me is a God of sound judgment. A sensible God who can guide us and lead us into truth. So thinking about these, these three thoughts. Power, a God of power. A God, the, the word there means force or might or one who is able. One who is able. I like that little bit. Yes, God is able to heal. Absolutely believe that. God is able to demonstrate his power and his, uh, his might in all sorts of amazing ways. And I would say to anyone, um, if you're struggling, if you are facing an illness or difficulty and you would like us to pray for you, we will happily pray with you for God to heal you. It's up to God what he does, but we will happily pray for you. But as you read on in 1 Timothy, there's a, there's a little bit more that helps me understand something of this power or force of God who is at work in our lives. Because if you read on, the next verse says, Don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or, or me, his prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. Relying on the power of God. To be able to stand confident and speak of this God in whom I believe sometimes is difficult. And when that difficulty comes, we need God with us to help us. We need to rely on his power, not our own ability. More than that, if you read on a little bit towards the, 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 the end of that little paragraph... Paul writes one of the, the, the best little verses that I think is, is in the New Testament. And he says, But I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. God is able. And, and when we take about the power of God, I, 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 want, I want us to, to just have faith to trust God will get us through just as simple as that 
He is able to keep us. He is able to hold on to us. And the, the picture that I've seen used to describe this uh, um, adequately, it, it, I think is a very good little image, is of a parent and a child. Um, I want you, those of you who are parents in the room, I want to imagine a time when you had a young child and you went somewhere to do something, shopping or something like that, and things were very, very busy. And you say to your child, hold my hand, right? Now I want to ask you a question. What kept that child with you? Their ability to hold on to you or your ability to hold on to them? I can tell you now, it wasn't them. And even when they wanted to let go and they had a little wriggle, all you did was just clench a little tighter to make sure they didn't run away. Yeah? Been there, done that? Yeah? Yeah. God will not let you fall away. God will not let you get lost. He has hold of your hand. As soon as you put your hand into his, it's fixed. It's safe. He has you. He is a God of power and of might. And he will keep it. When? Until that day. What's that day? The day when Jesus Christ returns. That's the day when there will be peace on earth. Because all evil will be removed. That's the day when the lion will lie down with the lamb, as it says in Revelation. When there will be harmony. That's the day when striving will cease and sickness will cease. And until that day, he's got us. We need to rely on his power, on his ability. We can't do this in our own strength. I don't know about you, but I often feel like a little child trying to be he or being held by a parent. Um, sometimes I get distracted by life. Do you get distracted by life? And I go, oh, look, and I want to stop. And I'm reminded, nope, we're, go we're on a journey. We've got to keep moving. Sometimes I feel it's just hard work holding on like this all the time. Can I put my hand down now? And you just like, you want to let go. But, you, but even when you let go, he's still got you. When you're tired, when you're weary, when you have no energy left, he holds firm. Bold faith trusts in a God who is able to keep us, to hold us. We will never be let go. I read on in 2 Timothy. I get to another verse which reads like this, hold on to the pattern of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You see, this, this Holy Spirit who is in us has sound judgment, a sound mind. Um, the word here conjures up a couple of thoughts. It, it's sound as in firm, solid, but it's also sound as in sane, it's also sound as in a right mind. It's also sound as in safe thinking. God in us, the Holy Spirit in us, is the one who knows the truth, understands the truth, reminds us of the truth, speaks truth to us. He communicates to us what is right and what is wrong. So when I'm not quite sure which way is up and which way to go, he is there to come alongside, to prompt us, because he thinks about things in the right way. His thinking about things is safe in the long term. Yeah, it, it, you can catch the, the, the picture here of, of what God is trying to do in us and through us. And, and this, I think, is the aspect of God that is going to be most important for us as believers in the next decade. 
power, we've, we've talk, I mean, lots of people talk about the power of God to heal, the power of God to save, all of that stuff. This is, I think, is crucial. God has shown us how to think. We're told in Romans 12 to renew our mind. We're told in John, um, John 16 that the Holy Spirit is the one who will remind us of everything that Jesus said. He will bring us, he will teach us what is right and what is wrong. And I honestly believe with my whole heart that in God's word, he has gifted us truth. Sound teaching that we are to hold to, to cling to, despite what is happening in the world around us. In fact, we, 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 when, when you look at the, and study what is the Bible, what is Scripture, one of the things that, that we, we, come, we recognize as a belief, something that we understand, is this, this is uh, God's inspired word. What, what do we mean by that? We mean not that, not that God sent it down from heaven by Parcel Express or anything like that. What we mean is this, that the God, the Holy Spirit, the one who has sound judgment, the one who is wise, the one who will teach us truth, came to men, human beings like you and me, and enabled them to write down the teachings of God. That's what we mean. So all of this scripture is God-breathed. God-breathed in the sense the word breath is the same word in Greek as spirit. That God infused this with his life, with his breath, with his spirit. That it was the Holy Spirit at work gifting us scripture. I don't have to work it all out myself. Here's, here's the, the good news. I don't have to work it all out myself. I don't have to wrestle with so many issues in life. There is scripture here where God has said, this is the truth, this is the way, walk in it. Hold on to it, believe it, live it. Now I also recognise that actually sometimes it's not too easy to do that, is it? Because understanding scripture, some of us, we get, we get stuck every now and again on big issues. Yeah? I mean, so... Next year, I'm throwing it out here, next year, that's 2022, yeah, next year, we're intending throughout the year to pick a number of big issues that we can address and talk about and say, what does scripture say about these issues? So here's, here's your opportunity to influence uh, what subjects we talk about. If there's an issue that you feel you would love to hear spoken about, can you let me know? You can speak to me, you can write me a letter, you can send me a text message, an email, you can phone me, I don't mind any way, whatever. Let me know what issues might you think are really, really important, or ones that you just plain struggle to get your head round. I'm not saying that I will have an answer, but I'm saying we'll help start a process of thinking and point you to scripture and how to wrestle with it. More importantly, as we do that, we're not doing it on our own. One of the best things and the wonderful truth about the Bible is this. When you read it, the author will help you understand it. Holy Spirit who inspired Paul to write this to Timothy is the same Holy Spirit who comes alongside you and says, this is what it means. We don't have to work it all out on our own. I can trust that God has given me sound judgment. That in his word, he has given me the wisdom we need in how to live. And then love. It's in the letter to the Romans that Paul actually says, God has poured out his love into our hearts through his spirit. 
Love is, is the, kind of the, the benchmark, the foundation that everything points back to. You see, if we, we can believe in power, and we can believe in miracles, and we can believe in a God who could reshape the world, but do you know what? If it, God wants to act in a loving way with people, and when we see someone who is struggling or wrestling or whatever, is our response one of love? Do we call on a God of power out of love? Because you know, the number of times you read in the Gospels, Jesus looked at someone, had compassion, his heart was stirred, and so he acted. Or even sound judgment. I mean, one of the things, if you really, really, really want to upset someone, tell them the truth in a really hard way, in a harsh way. It's really effective for getting under people's skin. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't be sitting that way around. Should. When we speak the truth, we should do it lovingly and with grace, yeah? In other words, I, know, I may know that you are a rotten scoundrel and you've sinned all your life, but I have to tell it with love, yeah? I have to be gracious in how I put it. One of our tutors in college said this, if you ever want to preach to, to people that they are sinners and going to hell, I better see a tear in your eye. I better see a tear in your eye. If you love people, you find a way to speak to them that's loving. You don't neglect the truth, you don't abandon sound judgment, but you wrap truth in love. This is how the Holy Spirit wants to work in us and through us. Because I don't know about you, but I'm very, I, I, sometimes I'd like to pick up a little stone of truth and just lob it at someone, yeah? Uh, it, it's very rewarding. That's, sorry, am I sending the wrong message? I need God's help to love and be loving. I need God's help to show me how do I express this in a loving way that does not alienate people from me or alienate people from God. How can I do this? We can trust that God will be with us to help us. Elsewhere in scripture, I'm reminded of the verse, I can't remember where it is, but you know, don't worry about what you need to say. You know, if, you're, if you're hauled up before the authorities, and you know, at that moment, he will give you the words. At that moment, he will give you the words. We can trust God the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to love people in any situation. So bold faith. What does bold faith look like? Bold faith for me is a quiet trust in God. It's a firm trust in God. It's a confident trust in God. It's faith trusts in God's a, a power and ability to keep us and help us. I don't know how often you've been in a situation and you pray, please God help me get through this. Did you get through it? Thank you, God. Yeah? He can. We can trust him to do that. Bold faith trusts in God's word to lead and direct us. How many times have you been struggling or something and all of a sudden a word of scripture comes back to mind and you go, oh yeah. See, he whispers things into our hearts for us to hold on to. We can trust him to be with us and guide us. And bold faith, trusting God's love to fill us and transform us. Because as, as a lot of you will know, you know, loving people ain't easy. And actually, we need God. We need God's work in us to make us like him. See, the antidote to fear is faith. It's trust. It's surrender to God. It's letting him fill us with his spirit. And this person, this Holy Spirit, is one 
who has power, who has love, and who has a sound mind, sound judgment. We can trust him to help us. I do believe that we need to embrace this. We've, we've been talking for a few weeks now about bold faith. Uh, and I want to kind of wrap up this morning like I wrapped up last Sunday. And I want to say bold faith is about us saying yes to God. Standing in faith with God. Saying, I believe. It's not about, um, it's not about knowing right doctrine. It's not about having a right understanding. Uh, it's not even about reading the scriptures all the time and, and thinking you know them and understand them. If all you're doing is analysing and doing it out of your own self. It has to come from this communion, this relationship that we have with God. Where we come to him, we spend time with him. We trust and believe that he is with us each and every day. And we honestly believe he'll get us through. We honestly believe he will help us love the people around us. We believe he will give us the wisdom we need each and every day. So if you are in need of a help from God, maybe you're looking and saying, please God, I could do with a bit of empowerment today. Why not ask someone to pray for you? If you need a little bit of wisdom or you're wrestling with an issue, why not say, please pray with me that God will help me? And if you're brave enough, you could even say, I'm really struggling with this person in my life. I really need God to help me love them. Maybe ask someone say, will you pray for me today? We don't do this on our own. God is with us. And God has brought us together to help each other. Learn what it means to stand in faith, to stand confident that he, by his spirit, is with us. Let's pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you. You are such an amazing God. You come to us and you help us. You, you have not left us abandoned on this earth, but you've, you've gifted us your very own spirit to be with us, to fill us, to help us, to guide us, to empower us, to show us, to lead us, to enable us. Oh God, will you fill us afresh with your spirit? Where we are in need of your power, will you move? in your grace and in your love and in your power. Father, where, where we are lacking in love, pour out your love afresh into us, upon us and through us, that we may love as you love. And Father, where there are issues and questions in life and we're not sure what the answer is, Holy Spirit, come and guide. Come and show us your truth, that we may live and walk in your ways. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.